My name is Dan Demetrio, I'm CTO of Metercar, and we are part of Sony Group, uh, that somehow dropped off the slide, which is relevant because we're talking about computer vision on the edge, okay? <clears throat> so, there's a growing demand for edge AI and computer vision, that should be no surprise to anybody, and the problem is that the, given that the demand is growing so fast, the resource consumption is really huge. Like if you have to transmit a bunch of video to the cloud and do all the computer vision over there, that's just not scalable. So we're trying to push stuff to the edge. Now, when we do that, we have a bunch of development challenges which you're probably very familiar with. Lack of compute resources, fragmented edge environments, security threats, and somehow poor development experience in embedded systems development. Uh, many IoT devices, or you know, say microcontrollers, are super resource constrained, which I think uh, we all understand, but maybe we forget because we're in the cloud native cloud world where we have lots of resources. As you can see, some of these have minuscule amounts of memory, uh, although by historical standards, it's quite a lot, right? Uh, the other problem is that in the IoT space and embedded development space, there's a lot of fragmentation on many levels, operating systems, uh, architectures, instruction set architectures, and communication protocols, for example. WebAssembly does help with some of these. Lack of isolation is a real concern in these environments because we often don't have MMUs, memory protection, the stuff that we're, we're used to. And typically, uh, you know, quite a large percentage of uh, security vulnerabilities are actually related to memory problems, and these are very, very uh, vulnerable on the, on the IoT environments. Now, another thing is that embedded development is, devel is really dominated by C and C++. Um, which, again, shouldn't be surprising. These are the systems programming languages. Uh, but uh, the problem is that nowadays, a lot of the AI and data frameworks are mostly Python. So we have a bunch of Python developers don't necessarily uh, want to delve into the C, C++ world to, to do what they need to do. So we have this impedance mismatch. So WebAssembly for Edge and Vision apps can solve some of these problems. The lightweight execution environment, uh, I'm just gonna skip that because you all know what that's all about. We're using Whammer. WebAssembly micro runtime. Um, write once, run anywhere, quote unquote. Not exactly, but at least that's like part of the way there. You know, we're trying to ease it, the development burden, you know, in terms of porting. Hopefully to nothing, maybe to not very much. Uh, secure by default, that's a very, very important aspect here, which is that we can enforce the memory protection and we can also restrict access to interfaces that are, are not supposed to be used. Uh, relatively easily in the, in the WebAssembly environment. And finally, polyglot programming to get around that impedance mismatch between what the developers know and what the systems need, okay? So the security model is, very, is a good fit for, for IoT. Uh, we can already use the, uh, the WebAssembly memory protection and restrict access to the interfaces. We can do a lot more static analysis as well uh, before, before that. Um, Python programming is Again, the interest in Python within the WebAssembly community is actually growing quite a lot. And we've done a bunch of work uh, to uh, run Python efficiently within uh, a WASM sandbox environment. We've done it several different ways. Uh, transpiling, uh, running CPython fully, or straight up compiling C Python code into, into WASM, okay? And now, Py WASI is now in a tier two support of the Python, uh, CPython itself. So it's interesting and it's growing in, in, uh, in importance. We're actually using MicroPython at the moment, running inside the, the WASI sandbox. And we have a very constrained environment where we really don't need that much from Python. We don't need general purpose Python. We just need something like NumPy, and you know, basically that's, that's enough. So uh, this is something that we can run currently within 1.5 megabytes AOT compiled. That's still a lot for some microcontrollers, but it, we're making progress, okay? So putting it all together, you know, we, uh, it's kind of changing topics for a second here, but Sony has developed this intelligent vision sensor, the IMX500, which basically is a DSP memory and the actual uh, pixels in the same package. And this we can program to run AI models uh, you know, of, of some sort. We use this in our IoT device that you see there in the bottom left, uh, which you can see at our booth afterwards. And we built this device stack, which is using WebAssembly as a, as a key part of the stack. Uh, so we can run applications on our IoT device on the microcontroller, right? And basically with this and our local development environment, a developer can develop some application in Python, deploy it, monitor it, test it before, on the local device before uploading it to the Atrius cloud 
for large scale you know, fleet management and, and so on. Um, I was gonna go through success cases, but we don't have time. So you can see those at our booth right outside uh, this afternoon and, and tomorrow as well. So, you know, sneak preview, we can run the same applications on different uh, devices like a Raspberry Pi or a, an ESP32 based microcontroller uh, camera. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>